If you know one thing about the cry of Bugad Lawin, it might be this. Or maybe this. This cry started the armed struggle for independence and changed the history of the Philippines forever. But due to the multiple accounts of when and where it happened, the identification of its exact date and location became a highly controversial issue that remains unresolved up to this day. This is Francesca de Nozalan and I'm going to discuss an avatoro analysis on one of the most recognized events in the Philippine history, the cry of Ugad Lawi. The Katipunan, a secret organization led by Andres Bonifacio that aims to gain independence from the Spanish colonizers with the use of violence and arms, until it was discovered in 1896 which led to the beginning of the Philippine Revolution or the first cry. Unlike the Filipino term sigaw, the word cry doesn't mean shouting. It comes from the Spanish El Grito de Rebellion or El Grito for short. El Grito de Rebellion which strictly refers to a decision or call to revolt. The first cry serves as a signal of confirmation for the Catipaneros' total defiance to their allegiance to Spain marking the official beginning of the Philippine Revolution against the Spaniards. The revolt later grew in strength and spread to eight provinces including Manila, Bulacan, Cavite, Pampanga, Tarlac, Laguna, Batangas, and Nueva Ecija, which were eventually represented by the eight rays of the sun in the present Filipino flag. It is believed that the so-called cry took place in Balintawak, but others say that it really happened in Pugan Lawin. Nevertheless, there are different versions to consider in knowing the real date and place to cry. Because of the differing accounts and the ambiguity of place names in these accounts, the exact date and place of the cry is disputed. According to Guillermo Masangkay, the revolution happened on August 26, 1896 at Balintawak at the house of Apollonio Samson the cabeza of Barrio Caloocan. At about 9 o'clock in the morning, the meeting was opened with Andres Bonifacio presiding and Emilio Jacinto acting as secretary. In this meeting, it is said that they are asking the people to give a pledge that they were to revolt. Next is Gregorio de Jesus' version of the first cry. She is the Lacambini of the Katipunan and the wife of Andres Bonifacio. She has been a participant of this event and became the keeper of the secret documents of the Katipunan. In her account, the first cry happened near Kalaokan on August 25, 1896. Differing accounts by participants and historians have served to confuse us regarding the factual date and place of the event. An officer of the Spanish Guardia Civil, Lieutenant Oligari Diaz, stated that the cry took place in Balintawak on August 25, 1896. Chidoro Kalao, in his 1925 book, The Filipino Revolution, wrote that the event took place during the last week of August 1896 at Kangkong Balintawak. Santiago Alvarez, the son of Mariano Alvarez, the leader of the Magdiwang faction in Cavite, stated in 1927 that the cry took place in Bahay Toro on August 24, 1896. Pio Valenzuela, who happened to be the eyewitness of the event, and a close associate of Andres Bonifacio declared in 1948 that it happened in Pugad Lawin on August 23, 1896. Gregorio Zaide stated in his books in 1954 that the cry happened in Balintawak on August 26, 1896. Fellow historian Chidoro Agoncillo reported in 1956 that it took place in Pugad Lawin on August 23, 1896, echoing Pia Valenzuela's statement. Accounts by Milagros Guerrero, Emmanuel Encarnacion, and Ramon Villegas claimed the event to have taken place in Tandang Soras Barn in Gulod, Barangay Banlat, Quezon City. The prevalent account of the cry is that of Chadora Agoncillo in Revolt of the Masses, published in 1956. It was in Pugad Lawin where they proceeded upon leaving Samson's place in the afternoon of the 22nd that the more than 1,000 members of the Katipunan met in the yard of Juan Ramos, son of Melchora Aquino, in the morning of August 23rd. 
considerable discussion arose whether the revolt against the Spanish government should be stated on the 29th. Only one man protested, but he was overruled in his stand. Bonifacio then announced the decision and shouted, Pagmastan ninyo ang munting papel na umaalipin sa ating lahat. Kailangan na nating wakasan ang ilang daang taong pananakop ng Espanya. Tayo ang magtatagumpay. Dahil tayo ang mga anak ng bayan. Tayo ang nagmamayari sa lupang ito. Sa atin ang bayan. Pulitin ang mga sedula niyo! Mabuhay ang katipunan! Mabuhay ang revolusyon! Teodoro Agoncillo used his considerable influence in campaign for a change in the recognized site to Pugad Lawin in the date 23rd of August 1896. In 1963, President Makapagal ordered that the cry of Balintawak be called the cry of Pugad Lawin, that it be celebrated on the 23rd of August instead of the 26th. To conclude, if you're going to decipher why this event becomes very controversial, is because the eyewitnesses have multiple accounts. That's why it became a hot issue in the Philippine history, which remained unsolved up to the present day. We can peg the beginning of the revolution to the very first encounter between the Katipuneros and the Guardia Civil. In my own perspective, it's not really important when and where the first cry exactly took place. What matters the most is the essence of what Andres Bonifacio and the Katipunan have done for our country. Their decision to do a revolution and change the course of our history is the most important of all. So if we're going to scrutinize the date and the location doesn't really matter. What matters the most is that we give significance or value to the contribution of our national heroes in order to begin a revolution for us to be able to achieve our Philippine independence. It is the significance of the event rather than the date and place that makes Pugad Lawin a landmark in our history.